Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a champion guide for Paidma, so let's get into it. Alrighty, first of all, let's go ahead and pull Paidma up here in the index. She is in the Demon Spawn, and she is an epic Void Affinity Defense Champion. As always, for my champion guides, I do include one of these, you know, little infographics down in the video description that you can click on and pull up at your leisure. But first, let's go ahead and go over Paidma here. So, first off, she looks very cool. I love the aesthetics of Paidma. If I ever do a video of, like, top 10 coolest looking champions, Paidma will definitely be in that list. I love how her shield has like a gradient effect of like it's heating up as it as it, it gets to like the tip of the horns and then you know also on her on her helm it does the same effect it kind of heats up as it gets you know as it keeps going up the horn so i i love how this champion looks the weapon looks cool everything about her aesthetics is awesome so a plus on the artist that designed this character uh, first off, we see a base speed of 101. That's something I like to look at right away, and I and I love that. That is good. And for the A1, this is an incredible A1. Attack one enemy two times. If it is critical, has an 85% chance of placing a 50% decreased attack debuff on all enemies for two turns. So if we get her booked up, upgrade her skills, this is going to be a 100% chance to place the big version of decreased attack and she attacks twice so as long as one of those two attacks is critical she's gonna place this as long as you have good accuracy on her she's gonna have an aoe permanent decrease attack on the enemy team very good for dungeons and like s tier for uh the clan boss as well a, a great a1 a2 attack all enemies has a 35 percent chance of placing a 50 percent decrease accuracy debuff for two turns this would be mainly useful in the arena and you know dungeons and all that so the a3 attack one enemy remove all buffs from the target and places them on this champion we can get that to a three turn cooldown this is great for like the magic keep and just dungeons in general but the magic boss is very famous for having that massive shield that you just can't hack through well, Paidma will go ahead and remove that shield and actually place it on herself, which is a really cool uh, effect to see, is stealing that massive shield and watching your character's whole HP bar switch to a shield. So, I like the A3 as well. It's very interesting. So, some game-changing abilities here. You know, decrease attack is one of the best debuffs in the game. Decrease accuracy on an AoE three turns is, is useful and decent. And then the A3 has some cool, you know, removal of buffs and just has some, you know, overall general usefulness. And, you know, just, uh, you know, Paidma is, is going to be, if I pull up her grades here, Campaign, I gave her a B. I will actually show you here in a little bit. I will use her as a campaign farmer and, and show that she is actually viable as an end game campaign farmer. Not not amazing, but she's viable. For the clan boss, I gave her an A just because of that A1 reducing the clan boss's attack. It is it is incredible. It's one of the you know most important debuffs to get on the clan boss. And then Arena C+, plus. she's not garbage, but she's also not good. Uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend using her in the arena as, like, you know, one of your staple endgame characters, but she is decent. And then Dungeons A+, plus. she's an, an one of the best epics in the game for just general usefulness in Dungeons and helping your team kind of stay alive. She is also a defense character with really good speed, which means she's endgame viable. She can actually sustain and live in those Dungeons. Alrighty, and now I will go ahead and pull up my Paidma and kind of show you what we're working with here. So, for my Paidma, um, I'd like to get my champions, you know, above like 180 speed. Uh, you know, I just like to get those turns in. And, and towards the later stages of like Nightmare and Ultra, you need to have like 180, 190 speed. So, that's very important to, you know, for an endgame character to have really good speed approaching 200. And, uh, you know, for crit chance, you do want to get her to be like at least 80 to 90%. She's The nice thing is you don't have to get her to 100% because her A1 hits twice, like I said. So as long as one of those two attacks is critical, you can see here I've got my Paidma at 
a uh, a 95% crit rate. So as long as one of her two hits is critical, she's going to keep that decrease attack debuff, you know, up with basically permanent uptime. So, you know, very good and viable there. And, you know, thus I went with the crit rate gloves just to help me get to that point. Substats, you're obviously going to be looking for accuracy, speed, and defense, crit damage, stuff like that. She's a defense character, so we're probably going to want to go with a defense chest. And then, you know, like I said, get speed, accuracy, crit chance, crit damage. Boots, it's always good to have speed boots. I, I, I love having speed boots. And, you know, then same thing. Accuracy, defense, crit chance, crit damage. And you can see that my accuracy for my Padma is about 150. I would want that to be over 200, but I actually don't use her in the clan boss a whole ton as of yet. I want to get just a little bit better like jewelry on her until I start doing that. I do have a really good Tayrell that I have also done a video on. So I currently use him mainly for the clan boss. But, um, you know, Paidma can definitely slot into that role to help you if you don't have Tayrell. She can do really well. Or if you're if you're fighting a force affinity, you can slot Paidma in and she will do just fine to replace that, that Tayrell attack down character role. In terms of the jewelry... Uh, you know, you, you just want to, you're, you're going to want to get defense and accuracy and sustain out of your jewelry. You can't really get those things much on your ring. So just go with defense or HP. And then on your amulet, you know, there's an argument to be made for crit damage or HP. Uh, just whatever your best one with accuracy as a substat would be kind of what I would go with there. And then obviously we're going to want an accuracy banner and ideally one that would have HP, defense, and speed on it. But, uh, you know, we'll see here that once I get hers to, you know, level 16, she'll be pretty good to go for endgame clan boss accuracy. And, uh, you know, for the for the gear pieces, you can go, like, four-piece speed, two-piece defense, two-piece speed, two-piece defense, two-piece HP. Uh, you know, you just want to get a good blend of getting close to that 200 speed with some good sustain and, and and helping her get some defense will will improve her damage and you know also hp is viable for her you just want her to to not fall over and be able to sustain for you for the masteries uh she is one that you're probably going to want to go down offense and support because she is one you're going to want to be able to use against the clan boss and uh, she's going to want to go war master because she doesn't have an a1 that hits three times she obviously wants Master Hexer and Lore of Steel and uh, Arcane Celerity. So this is kind of the optimal route that I, and I my, my camera blocks it, but I went War Master here on the far left. And this is kind of the optimal route that I went for currently doing the Masteries on my Paidma. Now, I promised you I would show Paidma as a campaign farmer in the end game. So we'll go stage 12 on Brutal Difficulty. We'll put her by herself and kind of see how she can do... You saw my gear on her and, and everything. She's not perfect, but she's geared pretty well. And we'll be able to see that she does, uh, I, I want to say in like 28 to 30 seconds, something like that. So, uh, you know, definitely a viable farmer. She's void affinity, which is nice. She's never going to be weak. So she'll be fine in stage 12-3. She stole the buff. <laughs> Alright, well, it went a little bit slower than I expected, but she is able to do it. You know, we're looking at about a 45-second run here. So, uh, uh, you know, obviously not S-tier and not optimal, but she can slot into that role if you're really strapped and need a character to farm the campaign for you. But where she really shines is in Dungeons and the Clan Boss. So I will kind of show you a run against the Dragon... We'll go stage 20 and I'll show you, I'll kind of show you Paidma in the end game against the dragon. So down here on the far left is our Paidma and we'll see that when she kind of attacks with her A1, she'll apply the decrease attack to the whole team. And boom, boom, and now the whole team is decrease attack. So that's a very cool A1 and a very consistent, reliable effect that will really help you in the end game of dungeons and the clan boss. And uh, she actually hits decently hard. Remember, she's a defense character, so that means her damage scales off of defense. So 
even though we give her really good sustain, she actually, you know, slots in and does a decent amount of damage for us. Oh, that was bad RNG. My Ellen Arrow used her combust. What combust does is, is it removes all the poisons and does the damage instantly instead of waiting all those turns. And she used it versus one enemy that had like a sliver of health left. So sometimes the AI is not optimal on um, auto. So at least at the end of this run, you'll be able to see kind of how Paidma compares, you know, in terms of her damage and kind of an endgame dungeon. So this is when the dragon inhales and you have to deplete that purple part of that meter up there. And if you de deplete the purple, the dragon will come back down without doing that really strong Scorch ability. And Ellen Arrow should use her Combust pretty soon here, so we'll see the HP get chunked. And there it was. Boom. Oh, look at this. Six-star legendary Lifesteal Gloves. Live TV. hey -o. They are defense percent, so not great, but but they're okay. They're, they're an entry-level glove. So, yeah, we can see here that Paidma... Did 627,000 damage. Not bad. Um, obviously, Ellen Arrow with her, uh, you know, combust ability is going to do really good. But we can see here she did more than Bad L, more than Prince Kaimar, more than Dracomorph. Uh, you know, and obviously they would do all those champions would do a little bit more if Paidma wasn't stealing the damage. But we can, you know, Paidma, you know, holds up her end of the bargain in terms of lowering the attack and also, you know, doing a little bit of damage. Lowering the accuracy, a very solid, well-rounded character. Alrighty, so that's going to kind of do it with everything I wanted to show about Paidma. And admittedly, I underestimated her for a long time. Uh, you know, she kind of sat in my vault for a little bit. And, you know, she's one that I missed on. I I'm really glad that I built her and kind of came around on her. So if you have Paidma, definitely think about investing in her and using her. She is a very diverse and useful champion in many areas of the game including the clan boss so definitely think about using her if you have her and let me know what you think down in the comments as always thank you for watching have a good rest of your day peace